Okie dokie. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. This is the Diana Wright Show at the 8 o'clock hour. We welcome you from around the world and in the United States. And we thank you so much for joining us. This is Tuesday evening and it's the evening when we talk some sexy stuff with Dr. Melanie. And of course, I know a lot of you don't like to talk about sex and those things, you know, but none of us got here without some sex, okay? So it's important to talk about it. It's important for our young people to realize that they, when they're 13, their hormones are raging and their sexuality is in question. You know, some people are born gay, they say. Some people are not. Some people have boosted libidos and some don't. Some people are crazy with their hormones and some are not. So, don't be shy to talk, talk about sex. It brought us all here, and it is something to discuss with your children and find a good way to do it. If you're afraid to talk about it, just tune in to the Diana Wright Show live online. You'll get all the information that you need. So, once again, I'd like you to just remind you that this is a show of love, the show we talk about everything. We give you as much information as we can. And if you'd like to join the conversation, it's 561-228-1921. That's 561 561- Two two eight one nine two one. Dr. Melanie, our special guest this evening, is joining us by Skype, so you can actually see who you're talking to and with. And of course, she is one of the few of the breed that we miss so much, a general practitioner, because everyone is specializing in this and that and don't know crap about anything else. So... Anyway, (laughs) we have her as our special guest this evening, and I just want to take time out to remind you that I Love Me Day, which is International I Love Me Day, comes your way in just a few days, April 30th. That's the day that you're going to take to do something special for yourself. The program has a thrust to convince you that loving yourself is the most important thing you can do for yourself and that the little word that is L-O-V-E, only four letters, is one of the biggest, strongest, great words on the planet. We're all seeking love, trying to give it, want it. Some Some of us are desperate for it and can't find it. Some of us go through crazy things when we're in love and we do mad things too. So... It's nothing to be shy about. So April 30th, mark your calendar. That's the date to remember. All right? So anyway, before I get to Dr. Melanie, I want her to listen to this, and I want her to also comment when I welcome her to the program. A new study claims we might be wasting our time wearing a bra, ladies. So you know what I did? I went without a bra today, and I felt good about it. (laughs) It says... Wearing a bra may actually be causing our breasts to sag. Hmm. Momilish, a new French study, over 300 women now they used, conducted by Jean-Denis Rouelion, a professor at the University of France. Uh, And it says, bras may not be helping our breasts, from sagging medically, physiologically, anatomically, the breast does not benefit from being deprived of gravity. The study took 15 years, imagine that, to complete and found that each year a woman did not wear a bra, they developed lifted, firmer breasts. Now, the study also showed women who did not wear bras benefited the most because they developed more muscle tissue to provide natural support. When a woman wears a bra, the restrictive material of the bra can prevent muscle tissue from growing, which may then actually lead to accelerated sagging sooner. So all you young girls out there, take off them bras. Okay, Dr. Stafford Bromard, (laughs) a New York plastic surgeon, said this. For younger women, not wearing a bra will lead to increased collagen production and elasticity, which improves life in a developing breast. Tension on the corrective (laughs) tissue, connective tissue, and ligaments supporting the breast can be beneficial to prevent sagging. 
Now, I went out today and I made sure I didn't wear a bra. I hate brassieres. And I always thought, when I watched uh, Wesley Snipes, who talked about he wore a bra for a movie that he did and he was like, I don't know how you women do it. This thing is crazy. And I thought, yes, uh, for real. It must be a man who developed this bra because he ain't wearing it. And the ones with the bones underneath that sticks you in your bowl, in your chest, <laughs> you know. So... I thought that was very interesting. So, Dr. Melanie, what what do you have to say about this? I'm gonna I'm gonna Skype you in now. There you are. Uh, t tell me your thoughts on this breast study because I agree with this guy, you know. Because I'm serious. I hate brassieres. I truly well, do. Good evening to you, and good evening to our audience. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to say that's a very interesting find. <laughs> um, it's amazing that you're actually talking about brassieres because I actually had a discussion with the patient today mm -hmm. about wearing a bra, if you will, that's not the correct fitting size. Okay. Okay. Tension on the breast by any means and every means actually does affect the breast. So, for example, patients or people in general, who women who wear bras that have underwires, mm -hmm. sometimes can cause them to develop chest pain symptoms because like that um, doctor that you um, referenced earlier said, you're actually putting pressure or tension on the collagen. Mm -hmm. On the skin, you're putting a lot of tension. And because of that, you know, it can be very uncomfortable. So the idea of not wearing a bra and your breasts, you know, start to sag, that could be a concern for many women. But the other thing you have to think about, take for example, Oops. A woman that is not your average I am getting I'm getting a feedback here. Doc, do you have your um your iPhone volume up? As far as I'm aware, it is up. Let me just okay, just double check that for me. Our special guest is Dr. Melanie and you know, as usual when you Skype things in it gives you a little issue, but you just have to tone it down and tune it and make sure you get the right sound. Okay, Dr. Melanie, go ahead and, and try speaking with them for me. Sure. So, as I was saying earlier, um, a lot of these women experience discomfort. So, if you have, for example, someone who is not your average size female and they have very large breasts, mm -hmm. they can develop severe back pain, and that's why correct support of the breast tissue is very, very necessary. So, if somebody decides they don't want to wear a bra, then the best idea would be something like, you know, not necessarily a brazier, something like a sports bra may be more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's okay too, as long as you have the correct size, because it's about your breast being appropriately or adequately supported in whatever garment you decide to wear to keep them in place. Okay. All right. So breasts. All right. We're going to move from the breasts now. And I want to talk a little bit about the sexuality of young people. Because young people seem to, you know, have a lot of issues with their sexuality. They Their hormones are raging. They really don't know what they're doing, but they try to do crazy things like having sex and not getting, you know, having condoms on. And then they get pregnant and they go, oops, I didn't know that one time would make me pregnant. <laughs> So, um, how do you, you know, kind of reach out to young people, if you have any in your practice, when they're struggling with their sexuality? Well, one of the best things to do with young, a young person who comes in, for example, a teenager mm -hmm. who comes in and they're curious about their sexuality is to talk to them. I mean, mm -hmm. it's very easy to talk to them. I had that discussion with my niece a couple minutes earlier. Okay. So it's something that's very, very necessary. Communication for any relationship, no matter what it is, is the art of maintaining that relationship. Mm -hmm. And if we're not open enough to discuss with our young people what their feelings are, you know, their hormones are changing. And so obviously as their hormones are changing, they have different things that they become, you know, desirous of. And mm -hmm. sex might be one of those things that they become desirous of because their hormone levels are increasing. So it doesn't mean that because their hormone levels are increasing, you say to them, go hide in a closet, don't think about it, just think about it. Because there are some parents who do that. They say, you're never going to get married until you're 40. You're never, uh -oh. ma never dating until you... One guy told me today... Until you're 40? Office, a guy told me at the office today, he told his daughter, I will let you date at 37. Oh, Jesus. 
So there are some parents out there that I don't want to say they're antiquated in their belief, but obviously that is not reality. It's 2013 for crying out loud. <laughs> when I come at home, they will discover on the internet. They mm-hmm. will discover by watching television. They will discover at the movies. Right. Or they will discover among themselves with their friends. So it's very important that when they come in, you tell them, you know, it's very healthy, it's very normal to have these kinds of feelings, if you will, where you have an appetite to want to be curious. However, you have to remember there are consequences attached to engaging in adult behavior. So it's very important to tell them that too. Mm -hmm. And not only that, you want to tap into the idea of saying you are at risk when you allow yourself to be open in this particular area to a male or a female. And nowadays, anything seems to go for a lot of people. So there's sex relationships that also, as a society, we're now dealing with. And so it goes back to the idea of sitting down with your child and letting them know it is normal, it is natural to have these feelings. God gave them to you. If you don't have them, I'm concerned. Okay, great. All righty. All right. I, 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 I want to um, talk a little bit about libido because uh, can you kind of explain what that really is? Because a lot of people don't even understand what libido means. <laughs> so um, the idea of libido is basically a desire for sexual intimacy. Mm-hmm. So it is having that desire, being aroused to wanting to engage in sexual activity with someone of the opposite sex. In this case, there are people that are having same-sex relationships. But it's the idea that you're 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 stimulated because of increase in hormones mm-hmm. at a particular point in time. And so what happens is mentally, your your libido can be stimulated. Sometimes it could be from a smell, so mm-hmm. someone's perfume, or sometimes just looking at you know somebody else's body that mm-hmm. can be. Stimulated. Sometimes it's the way your hair is combed that stimulates that sex drive, but that's basically what the idea of libido is. Okay, so 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 basically, when we're in a relationship, whether it's that we are married or we choose to shack up, you know, as they call it, it is important for us to communicate to the person that we're with what we like. Is yes. that what it is? Yeah. Because I I think some women are just kind of scared to say, I like it this way. I, this is my G spot and. You know, um, this is what I like to feel like I'm getting ready to have sex then. Right. Right. So, 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 so the communication of the thing, it's okay. It is very important that you communicate. It's not, okay, let's get it on and keep it moving. It should <laughs> never be that. And there's some people, that that's the way they are. They said, okay, you know, you, you're in the mood now, let's get it over and done with. And, you know, the show goes on. But... With women, we are stimulated very differently. Women, mm-hmm. it's about the touch. It's about the communication. It's mm-hmm. about saying the right things at the right time. Mm-hmm. Don't just tell me, oh, my breasts are nice, and that's the end of the story. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you want to say you look really nice today. Your hair looks really good. I love this new hairdo you have. I love the way you smell. Mm-hmm. I like the outfit you're wearing. So we kind of have to be stimulated throughout the day, for mm. example. Amen to that. <laughs> that stimulated throughout the day so that when you actually get ready to engage in sexual intercourse with that special person, mm-hmm. you're not only physically ready, but you're mentally ready. Because for women, it's not just the physical. Our minds have to be stimulated before our bodies are stimulated. With men, well, the blood goes to the penis and that's it. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I want to I jump in here with something else that um, one of my viewers said to, yesterday to me, uh-huh. and I told him I was going to bring it up with you today, Floyd. Okay. He said that, have I ever talk, thought about people who are in wheelchairs? How do you have sex and you're in a wheelchair? And I then added um, disability to that because... I w- there's a show that was on, I think it was Sundance, called Push Girls. These girls are all in wheelchairs, and they try to live as normal a life as they can and be as independent. But I've never really, you know, given that a thought. How do people in wheelchairs and people who are disabled have sex? You know what's funny? And I would dare not 
put this out there because the patient <laughs> knows exactly who they are. Oh, Jesus. But I would say this much. I have actually asked the same question of a particular individual who wow. is in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And what the person said to me is, you must lay down at some point, don't you? <laughs> and that's okay. all I can say And, that, the, and that, that's the end of that story. Okay, Floyd, you heard it. What he said to me, though, that imagination becomes very important it when is, you are disabled or you're in a wheelchair because you, you kind of have to imagine what you, I guess, what you used to do or what you want to do or to even make it happen. Well, not only that, just to add to that, um, Diana, one of the big things that we have to remember is sexual intercourse is not just lying in the bed and missionary position. There's so many other creative ways mm -hmm. that people can have sex. And I think that's one of the big things that, you know, it's like a taboo in society to even have this conversation. Mm -hmm. However, there are people out there that they're really curious about what other ways can they engage in sexual activity. So, I mean, you know, you have some people that like breasts and they like to have their breasts sucked on or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, there's so many other creative ways. There's some people, their G-spot is their neck. Yes. You know what I mean? So everybody has different things that they like, and that's why it's important that you know your body and you know what you like. Mm -hmm. Because if you're unable to know what you like, then you're not able to communicate that to the person with whom you're going to entertain having sexual intercourse. So. Okay, and it's also important to let that person know what you want. Yeah. Don't be afraid, women. It's okay. He's not going to leave you and go to yeah. another girl. I mean, women. I, I find that women, some women are just so insecure about... If you're you're with someone, they don't want to say anything because they're afraid the guy's gonna leave. If they want to leave, let him go because he was not worthy of you in the first place. If you're not able to say to someone, look, what you're doing, the way you're rubbing my breast is too harsh or too hard or you know I don't like it that way, and this is my G spot because a lot of women talk about the G spot. I you know I know that G spot thing how it works out, but anyway. You know, but a lot of women talk about the G-spot. They have a particular part of their body that when it's touched, they become aroused immediately, just like a man. Seriously. So anyway, all right. Um, I'm going to, I want to talk a little bit about menopause and how it affects your desire to even have sex. And also, a lot of women, after they have children, they find that they have absolutely no libido left. Forget it. So, so let, 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 let's talk about that a little bit. So it's funny. Um, there was a saying I heard once where it said, an archaeologist is the best husband a woman can have. The older okay. she gets, the more interested he is in her. Okay. <laughs> yes. But um, what I wanted to say with regards to menopause, it is something naturally that occurs to all women. Mm -hmm. um, there's some people, like we had mentioned earlier last week, that go into menopause very early, right. um, you know, for whatever reason, whether they had to have a hysterectomy for, you know, a reason of dysfunctional bleeding mm -hmm. um, or, you know, some other cause. However, with menopause, as you know, the hormone levels go down. Mm -hmm. So if you have a decrease in your level of estrogen and LH, luteinizing hormone, those two are very important for ovulation and also just in general um, the arousal stages of sexual intimacy. And so if you have a decrease in your hormone levels, then obviously your sex drive might not be where it should be. And that's where the creative aspect of the relationship has to take place. Mm -hmm. And so there are numerous stages that you have to think about with menopause. So whether it's physical, um, you know, she might, she might be at the point now where she's gained a lot of weight because she's had children. Um, and hmm. you know, say she's let herself go, whatever the case might be. Right. But physical changes that occur, and women are sometimes not very happy with themselves, so they find it hard to even think that their partner would be attracted to them still. Okay. And then the hormonal changes that occur. Then there's also the psychological things that occur, and many times the psychological is the biggest X marks the spot issue that really creates. Um, problems in terms of intimacy with these women. And then there's, you know, the social, where mm -hmm. some women think, you know, well, I've passed the age of that, and I don't want that anymore, and I shouldn't be thinking about that anymore. And I'm thinking, 
No, that's not normal because this is something beautiful that was created by God for you to enjoy with that person that you share those feelings with. Mm -hmm. Um, And so the American Psychological Association classifies female sexual problems, mental disorders, then there's the loss of sexual desire arousal. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be discomfort with intercourse. And then many times there's diminished blood flow to the vagina. So a lot of times there's vaginal dryness that makes it very discomforting for them to be intimate in that way. Then there's trauma, which causes an aversion or a turnoff towards sexual activity. And then there's the inability to achieve an orgasm. So those are like some of the things that we really have to think about. Okay, let's, you mentioned orgasm. Let's talk about orgasm for a minute because it seems that, well, it is said a lot that women fake orgasm just to get it over with. Oh. I, you know, I'm not sure because I, I, when I started doing the Diana Wright show in Jamaica, the first show I did actually was about orgasms, and you know, a lot of older people that were there, they kind of said, "Well, we, you know, we don't know any better. We just lay there and let him do his oh. thing, and that's it." <laughs> you know. So I, I just wondered if, if, if it's actually true that women really and truly fake or, orgasm, because we see it in the movies that they do fake it. And they, be, they fake it in a very dramatic way too, you know, in I the movies. You, it is impossible to fake an orgasm. It's either you're having one or you're not. You can make all the sounds, you know, do the bells and whistles if you want to. Right. But I'm going to go through the four stages uh-huh. of the uh-huh. sexual response cycle. Mm-hmm. And they're based on psychological and physiological changes. So the first stage is what's known as excitement. And that's triggered by the psychological and physical stimulation. Okay. Then okay. emotional changes that take place. You have an increase in your heart rate, your respiration, so you're breathing, and then there's swelling of the vagina and obviously the penis, and then lubrication Mm -hmm. because Uh the blood flow is decreased. Then you have a sustained excitement, which is known as the plateau phase, and that's the second stage. So you have vaginal swelling, the heart rate and muscle tension increase as long as the stimulation continues. Then the breast enlarge, the nipples become erect, and the uterus actually dips down. Wow. Because it's boom for when the penis actually enters the vaginal canal. Then the third stage is orgasm, and that is actually a synchronized situation where the vagina, the anal, and abdominal muscles all at the same time contract. Mm-hmm. And that's because you lose involuntary muscle control, and you have intense pleasure. So that's why all of this happens. And then there's the final stage known as resolution where you have a rush of blood away from the vagina, then the breasts begin to shrink and the nipples, and then there's a reduction in your heart rate, decreased breathing, and also decrease in your blood pressure. And that's kind of the end of the whole ordeal. Wow. So so for, for, for those of us who think we're faking it, <laughs> we're really not. Oh, wow. You can't fake it. Okay, ladies, for all of you out there who think you can actually fake an orgasm, you really can't. You heard the long explanation about the process that we go through. And it it, it seems like a much more lengthy process than a male, obviously. Because a man seems to be whoops, whoops, and I'm done. (laughs) the same process, except he doesn't have enlargement of his breast or anything like that. Okay becomes very erect mm-hmm. and in some cases it, it actually forms a curve okay instead of you know just a straight shot right. so to speak, it actually forms a curve the more excited he becomes okay wow okay our special guest inside the diana wright show live this evening is dr melanie her practice is called west palm beach family doctors inc and the number to call her 561-434-5678 That's 561-434-5678. And we're talking about sexuality, libido, sex, orgasm, how you can't fake the orgasm, ladies, because I guess the guy will know (laughs) that you're faking. And so, and I guess, well, definitely men, we know men can't fake it because, you know, it's here we go and then that's it. So I guess those days of saying what, what is it they said in Jamaica, slam, bam, thank you, (laughs) ma'am. I I remember that so well. Anyway, all right. um, Let's talk about the emotional connection with people. 
because a lot of people believe that you know you, you know you just go around and everybody's attracted to everybody everybody is not really attracted to everybody it takes a particular emotional connection to get this all happening it doesn't it it does. I mean, sexuality, um, as I kind of briefly touched on last week, is a very complex process. You have the neurologic, the vascular, and the endocrine systems that you have to mm. think. So, it, your sexuality incorporates your family, society, your religious beliefs, and then and it changes with aging, aging, mm -hmm. um, your health status, and even your own personal experience. So, you may have had a bad experience and say, "Well, you know what? This is not for me. I will never try this again." That's the end of the show. Um, <laughs> okay. There's some people that really are out there like that, where they have they become very averted to the idea of having um, sexual intimacy with anyone based on, let's really? say, are, are you talking about people who probably have been raped or something like that? I was gonna say, um, especially women who, um, particularly women uh -huh. um, who have been violated sexually. Um, wow. You know, they they develop sometimes what's called vaginismus. So. They actually tense up their vaginal muscles so the wow. penis cannot wow. enter at all. Really? You know? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So that does happen to some women. But like mm -hmm. I said, you know, interpersonal relationships are very important. Um, the attitudes that kind of come into play mm -hmm. around that time when you're thinking of engaging in sexual um, activity, also the needs and just kind of responses in the coupling process. Mm -hmm. um, any breakdown of any one of these areas definitely will affect the person's ability to be sexually intimate with someone. Okay. Are you, are you finding, are people discussing anything like this with you in your practice or no? All Women are generally shy. Time, all the time. And my favorite patients are the males. Oh, okay. Yes, so they actually they discuss sexuality and orgasms and stuff with you? They do. Oh. They do. And, and what I find very exciting is when I have patients who come in and they come in as a couple. Because, wow. you know, initially it might be that the um, female patient initially brought that up and she went home and said, oh, you know, I learned this, this, and this. And I think it'll do you well to hear it from the doctor's perspective. So <laughs> their spouse. Because sometimes spouses say to me, um, I don't think he's going to believe what I heard or she's not going to believe it or maybe they won't understand it so you explaining it to them might actually be better mm -hmm. and so they'll bring in their partner with okay. them. Okay, wow. But that's wonderful actually. It is. Yeah, it is. So, so you become like a sex therapist or a counselor for sexual behavior then. Yes, basically. and I, I have patients who come in, um, you know, there are a few, a few couples who shall remain nameless. Obviously. <laughs> you come in and they actually look at me and they smile. And their smile, based on their eyes, tells me the story. And then, prior to the end of the encounter, they'll say to me, thank you so much. I'm glad I opened up and I mentioned, you know, what it is that I was concerned about. Because right. now I'm better and now I'm able to be more open with this person. So Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I want to touch on something here that I think a lot of women are curious about. Why is it that men fall asleep when they have sex and you're there going, what just happened? And why is he sleeping? <laughs> because they are satisfied and their brain times two shuts down. Okay. So, so their actual mental state goes to sleep because now they've exerted themselves. So yep. they work themselves up to this point of a peak and now that they've worked themselves up and they've been sexually satisfied, then they just shut down altogether. It's not necessarily that they want to fall asleep, mm -hmm. but think about it. They work a lot harder than, we do. than women do. Okay. Because of that extreme exertion of energy, at that point, most cases, they'll tell you um, that they're thirsty or they're hungry or whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. and, and they tend to have to replenish themselves, so they'll go to sleep in many cases. Yeah, but shouldn't, shouldn't, I believe that after you have sex, you should be cuddling and stuff. And I'm like, what, what is this about? Well, well, you're right. Um, at, here's the problem. We kind of have it mixed up, I think, as women in some cases, because at the end of that actual ordeal, mm -hmm. women want to talk, they want to cuddle, yes. they want to be loved. <laughs> And the men are thinking, that's why I did all of that before this happened. <laughs> I have to deal with this at the end of the session. Oh, you know my goodness. I mean? 
And it sounds crazy, but that's really the way their minds work. Their minds wow. work where they say, let's do all the stimulation mentally and physically and otherwise so that when this is over, mm -hmm. she can leave uh -huh. me alone, I can get some rest. And then, you know, if there's a round two or a round three or whatever is coming, I'll be rested for that occasion. Like, okay. They definitely tend to tune out afterwards. All right. Our special guest inside of the Diana Wright Show live online is Dr. Melanie. And Dr. Melanie and I are talking about sexuality, sex, libido, all the things that you are afraid to speak to your children about and speak to your spouse about. We're talking about it and trying to make it a little easier for you. And if you want to put your spouse to the TV, we will school them <laughs> for you. Okay. I, I wanted to ask you, if is there a way that women can actually experiment with their bodies to find out or figure out where their G-spot is? Wow. Is there, is, is there a way to do that? And I'm not, I'm not talking about masturbation or anything like that. Just just figuring out by learning your body, how it functions, and, and when you're, you're actually having sex and, and, and thinking it through. Well, you know, one of the most creative, I mean, obviously not masturbation, but one of the most mm -hmm. creative processes is the imagination. Because okay. You, you can actually physically be in the act and you're not really being satisfied because your mind is not connecting with that individual at that time. Wow. Your body may be physically connecting, but your mind is not connecting. Mm -hmm. And for women, uh -huh. unless your mind and your body connect, there's usually the chance that you're not going to reach an orgasmic stage. Because mm. he may be satisfied you know, after whatever time um, period during that um, intercourse session, but you physically are not satisfied because your emotions have not been taken care of. And so the imagination is very, very important. You know, you can think creatively, what things do I enjoy about sexual intimacy with my partner? Or what things would I think would be pleasing to me mm -hmm. during that um, encounter? And so if you're able to actually think about that, and come to terms with that and share that with the individual, then chances are both of you will be satisfied at the end of the day. Okay. All right. Um, I, I just found some... Um, uh, how important is it to have foreplay before sex? Because I think a lot of guys and husbands just don't understand why it is so important to have foreplay. It is extremely important to have foreplay. Yeah. Just think about it. With all of what I just went through on the stages, mm -hmm. can you imagine if your body is going to take time to go through all those stages? Right. Well, you need to allow your mind and your body to feel and to have that high level of excitement mm -hmm. before you get to that full orgasmic stage. Because at the point of orgasm, in most cases, there's already penetration of the penis by the va vagina. Mm -hmm. or, um, right, penetration of the vagina by the penis is what I meant to say, sorry. Okay. Uh, or, you know, whatever other way creatively people, you know, get to that place. But if you're not stimulating the mind, no matter what you're doing to the body, in many cases, it might not work. And the reverse is true with males. Males are very visual people. And so... If a male is excited and they want to actually participate in a sexual encounter with someone, then what they see is going to have a lot to do with how they react. It doesn't mean they won't participate in the activity at the end of the day, but stimulation of the mind mm -hmm. along with everything physical that you're doing. So whether your foreplay is kissing, in some cases for some women, foreplay is talking. Oh, like talking. <laughs> really? And it, you know, in some cases, people like to have discussions about what they would like done uh -huh. during the actual encounter when it occurs. Okay. So somebody might be busy saying, okay, I'm sick of the missionary position. I don't want that anymore. Let's try something new. Okay. You know, and they might want to be creative in other ways. So mm -hmm. uh -huh. paying attention to what your partner is interested in doing, as long as it's not going to hurt you. I say people should be open. Okay, be open, be open, be open and creative with new things. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, I guess getting some negligees and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> anyway, I found an article that talked about the secrets to a happy relationship. 
And I'm going to just run down some of these for you because I started doing it yesterday and I didn't get a chance to finish because, of course, this morning was a sad morning because all of that craziness in Boston yesterday. So uh, secrets to a happy relationship. Ask for what you want was actually the number one thing they have on that list. Date your partner, meaning that you should go out on dates. Don't just get married and that's the end of that shop, locked up shop. Live your own life, meaning don't just get into what your partner does and forget about your friends and your life. You need to also live your own life. Be realistic. Don't always think of the love songs and the romantic things you used to do because now it's reality. I, I, I had a little problem with that because I believe that even though things have changed, you should still make an effort to keep the fire burning, don't you think? I agree. Okay. Okay. All right. This one is keep secrets for each other, but not from each other. So keep your partner's secrets, but don't keep secrets from them. And the next one is, guess what? Have sex. (laughs) It's good for you. (laughs) That's exactly what they're doing. Yes stress reliever that's around god created it so that obviously makes it important okay Um, of course in the right context of a relationship it's very very important and if you are not able to communicate with your partner Mm -hmm. on just a regular basis how do you think you're going to physically intimately connect with that person when you get to the bedroom or wherever you decide to have it Uh but you know what i mean you have to be able to connect with that person emotionally right because Guess what? When children come, in the case of relationships where there are children, when the children come, it's even more work <laughs> to keep that excitement going. Why? Because women, we have that maternal instinct, and we're going to divert our attention to our children and make sure the children are okay. And then mm-hmm. the husband's like, well, I was the first baby before all these babies. <laughs> I don't understand why you're not paying attention to me. I hear it in practice all the time. Mm-hmm. All the time. Where There are some husbands who say, you know, I was the most special person, and then all of a sudden this child came, and I said to them, how do you think this child showed up? Right. <laughs> because you connected emotionally and physically together and made that decision mm-hmm. on that particular day, night, evening, <laughs> whether it was on the kitchen table or it was oh, wherever. The- <laughs> wherever. But you both came together in an intimate setting, and this child was the product of your intimate relationship so just like you can have that love for your child Mm -hmm. have that love for each other because guess what their little eyes are watching you and how you react to one another is going to determine how they get appreciated when they leave the household and how they will appreciate that person when that special person comes into their life too okay our special guest dr melanie if you have a question of your own because I know I'm covering a whole lot of stuff here but if you have a question that I have not asked you can give us a call at 561-228-1921 that's 561-228-1921 okay Dr. Melanie let me continue it says here know why you stay just in case something happened in the relationship you should actually be knowing why you're staying if your husband cheated or whatever why am I staying in this relationship Um, they say to pick your battles Share the chores, gentlemen. Don't fix your relationship. Maintain it. Can you kind of break that one down? Don't try to fix it, but maintain it. So I'm going to go back to that one, but I am going to start with know why you stay. Okay. Here's the script. It's like going to a movie. Mm -hmm. You'll go and watch a movie, and you'll say, this movie was really good. Right. Some might say to you, what's the storyline of the movie? And you say, it was really good. Go see it for yourself. (laughs) You're never able to explain the story that you just saw. So Mm -hmm. a relationship is kind of similar to that, where whatever he tells you as a female you have to pay attention because you're going to respond to that, whether positive or negative. Mm -hmm. And whatever she tells you, you have to be open and listening. So your ears, the Bible says, be quick to hear, Mm -hmm. slow to speak, 
Yes. And the rest of the word continues, but I will stop with those two. Mm -hmm. So always have an open mind. Always be willing to listen to your partner. You are not always right. I'm so sorry to tell you guys. <laughs> not always right. Women, you are not always right. Mm -hmm. There is a point where you have to compromise. Okay. Come together and make a promise. Compromise. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that no matter what's going on, communication is very necessary. So when you shut down, she makes assumptions. When he shuts down, you make assumptions. Right. And I will say no more about assumptions, but <laughs> I'll leave it at the point of you must talk to one another. It's, it's just a part of what you have to do. Okay, all right. So let, 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 let's get to don't fix your relationship, maintain it. So maintaining your relationship is like a car. If your car needs fixing, you take it and you get it fixed. The, the whole reason why when you buy a new car, they have a maintenance schedule is because they don't want it to break down. Mm -hmm. So the relationship is the same way. If you don't spend time doing for each other all the things you did in the beginning uh -huh. to bring you together, then at the end of the day, you cannot blame Tom, Miss. Suzanne or whoever your name might be, you cannot blame that individual for your happiness. People come together only to enhance each other. Right. Always maintain your identity. If you get so lost in someone, that's why in many cases, people who have been together for a long time, for example, you know, people have been married 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, and that partner dies, it's like a yeah. part of that individual died as well. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they took time to get to know each other and maintain their own identities. Right. So, not because, I mean, they always tell you, you know, you know your friends, you know, show me your friends and it will tell me who you are. Mm -hmm. Well, if you show me your husband and I don't spend time with you as my friend, I will not understand when your husband comes to me and says, well, you know, she's like this and she does this. Why? I've spent time with you, so I'll know that's outside your character. Mm -hmm. And that really does not sound like it's a true story. Right. So if you don't spend time with your husband or your wife or your significant other, if somebody comes to you and tries to come into the midst of that relationship, mm -hmm. only the two of you know where the truth lies. Yes. Yes. And it lies with either both of you or none of you at all or one of you. Okay. And so you have to spend time getting to know each other always. Alrighty, I, I had used the analogy about your house, maintaining your house, because if you don't, it will fall down on top of you. <laughs> right. Anyway. right. Okay, stop pointing fingers, flirt with each other, change yourself, look at you, not only your partner. You know, like a lot of us will say, oh, my, your husband will say, oh, you look like you gained some weight or something. And when you look, he's having a big belly in front of him too, but he's not looking at himself. So I thought that one was quite interesting. Uh, uh, respect your differences. Give 100% to the relationship. Yes. That look, is very yes. important. Mm -hmm. Respecting your differences, that's a huge one. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Huge one. Because you cannot, if God made you both the same, you'd be very boring people. Exactly. Yes. So, yes. you know, opposites do attract. However, if you have a situation that's volatile, in other words, he's not able to talk to you and you respond in a calm manner or vice versa, mm -hmm. then something that's toxic should be exited, even for a temporary period where you both can cool down and come back and not have flames going off. <laughs> but you know, if you're able to talk to each other and able to understand that, listen, God made you a certain way, God wired me this way, mm -hmm. don't say, well, this is how I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people say that, this is how I am, you're not gonna change me. No one is attempting to change you. God puts people together in order to grow you. Mm. Okay, but you, you know, I, I find though that um, people tend to just the thing they liked about you when they met you, when they get married, they want to change that thing. You know, so, some people are attracted to something, and then when they get married or they start living in the same environment, then that thing become an annoyance as opposed to an attraction. So, well, you know, 
just have to, um, just to add to that, what you have to do as you're courting or dating, if you will, mm -hmm. what you have to do during that period is discover the things you are able to live with right. and things you cannot live with. Ah, okay. You're able to live without and what you really cannot live without. Okay. And that includes discussing finances before you go down that road. Mm -hmm. about marriage, because that's one of the huge contributors to breakups, too. Mm -hmm. Is there a lot of people who they don't discuss their finances? Okay, she's the big spender, he's the miser. You know, <laughs> I people that come together and she wants to go and shop every day and he's over here saying, you have 25 pairs of shoes, why do you need one more? And she says, well, this style looks better, this color looks better, this matches my new dress. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it can't come to any real agreement, but that's not even a real issue mm -hmm. because at the core... There's something else going on many times why people become shopaholics mm -hmm. and, and, you know, all these different habits that they pick up over years. Sometimes there's unresolved childhood issues or right. unresolved issues from the prior relationship that now strains this current one. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, look past the past. So you should, if anything happens in a relationship, you should not have it and then throw it back. You should look past the past. Okay. <laughs> Exchange gifts, they say. I like that one. Exchanging gifts. But I'd like to get the gifts <laughs> instead of giving them. Yeah, can I just touch on um, briefly, um, sure. maybe for a second. Looking, um, you know, accept the past for the past and leave it there. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important. If you take garbage and you throw garbage outside your door, you throw it in a dumpster, why would you go and pick that garbage up and put it back in your house? Ah, well, that's a good analogy, Dr. Melody. <laughs> Okay, and that, that says it all. <laughs> okay, ladies, so leave the garbage at the gate in the dumpster. Don't take it back inside the house. That's a good one. Okay, exchange gifts, and this one is Vive la Diferencia. Men and women are different in many, many ways, and you explained quite a few of those already. Uh, make each other a priority in your life. This, the next one says, kiss often and cuddling is absolutely fantastic. Share your fantasies. So I guess if you have sexual fantasies, you need to discuss those with your partner? You do, because guess what? If you don't talk about it, then in many cases, they might have the same... You know, here's the funny thing. Mm -hmm. If you don't spend time talking to each other, sometimes there are things that would be interesting to you that they might be thinking, but they're not brave enough to say it. Okay. It's like a book. You will go out and buy a New York's bestseller, and guess what? It's your story that somebody else wanted to tell. Ah, okay. All right, I got that. Okay. Uh, Share your fantasies. Don't take love for granted. I think that's a very big one because a lot of people believe, okay, I'm married now. I don't have to do much. So, you know, just chill out. <laughs> well, here, that's, that's a very good one because if you think about um, parents and children, mm -hmm. if you have a situation where you have a child, for example, you with your daughter, mm -hmm. if you woke up one day and you did not show your daughter the kind of love that she needed, you didn't give her the respect that she needed, mm -hmm. you weren't her backbone at that time when she needed you, then mm -hmm. after a while, they'll drift away. And guess what? There is a void that's created and that void has got to be fulfilled. Okay. And so that's how people end up getting into these estranged kind of behaviors and different kinds of relationships because that void for them must be fulfilled. Okay. All right. Broaden your horizons. No routine. Now, I hate routines, so I understand that one so well. I just don't like to do this today, that tomorrow, this, cook this today. I, I just truly hate that. So I, when, that, when I saw that one, I was like kind of overjoyed. So no routines, people. Okay, this one says, don't be afraid to experiment. Hmm. Don't sweat the small stuff. We always hear that one. Yes, and this one says, hold hands and listen to each other. A lot of relationships people just don't listen. You speak and they, they act as if they heard what you said, but they're not... You know, penetrating what you're saying, actually. Right. All right. right. Okay. Encourage good health. That means make sure your partner goes to the doctor and all those good things that they're supposed to be doing. So go and see Dr. Melanie. Her practice is West well, Palm right. Beach Family Doctors. Well, would, here's what I would say about that part. Okay. Encouraging 
is very necessary. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, if your husband or your significant other has heart problems or right. back problems, that can affect your ability to be intimate with that person. Mm -hmm. Or let's say they're diabetic mm -hmm. and in mm -hmm. many cases they have erectile dysfunction so they're not able to get an erection anymore. Mm -hmm. That can cause a lot of strain on the relationship. So if you weren't creative and communicating from years you know, over a period of time, mm -hmm. then obviously at that point when their health becomes so affected, then it becomes a very, very stressful and strenuous situation for the other partner. So mm -hmm. it's very important that you pay attention to their health as much as they pay attention to yours. Alrighty, that's a good, good, good advice. Make time for each other. You know, these guys, they go, I'm, I'm busy, I go to work and I'm tired. So... You need to make time for each other in the relationship. And keep up your own appearances. Yeah. Ladies, not because you're married now, you look like you were hit by a truck. You need to keep up your appearances. And I, I think of my Jewish friend, you know, I was at her house one day. And I, you know, it was time for her husband to come home. And I saw her going to the bathroom and freshen up her makeup and her clothes and everything. And I said, what, what, what's up? And she says, oh, you know, I don't like him to come home and see me looking raggedy, you know. I like to, even if I just finished cooking, I like to freshen up myself. And I thought, when I read this, I said, oh, that's what we're talking about, keeping up your appearances for your partner. And it's not one-sided, right? And you have to, because guess what? Looks are the first. Whether or not we want to admit it across mm -hmm. the nation, across the U.S., wherever you are, if you're tuning in, or if you will see this show at a later date, looks are the first thing that we all pay attention to whether it's beautiful hair it's beautiful clothes mm -hmm. somebody really looks attractive that stimulates your vision yeah so why give somebody an i a <laughs> okay all right welcome to you from around the world and in the united states this is the diana wright show live online my special guest this evening is Dr. Melanie, and the number to call Dr. Melanie is 561-434-5678, 561-434-5678. The name of her practice is West Palm Beach Family Doctors, Inc., and she is a general practitioner, so you hear for yourself, she can kind of cover the whole gamut for you when you visit. All right, um, empathize, don't analyze. Don't criticize about things like if your partner has low self-esteem or, you know, not that confident as you are. You shouldn't criticize. You must empathize and you must not analyze. What does all that mean? What do you not analyze? <laughs> well, you know, here's the thing. We are here to build each other. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're in a relationship and you're always cutting that person down, mm. what we say to ourselves is really what brings about an effect. Right. People can talk to you all day long. Someone can tell you you're very pretty. Somebody can tell you you're very intelligent, you're very smart. But it's not until you start to repeat those words to yourself. Self-conversation. Mm. People might say it's crazy talking to yourself. Mm -hmm. But the best conversation to have many times is the one you have with yourself. Like Sometimes the one that you have with yourself every morning to say, I love me. That's so important, which is my crusade on the show. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, I just want to say I congratulate you on doing that. April 30th, I have that marked on my calendar. Praise the and Lord. I <laughs> every day, too. And I've been sharing that with my patients. And there are mm -hmm. patients who come back and say, you know, thank you for telling me about that last month. I really appreciate it. Yep. Um, but I just want to say it's very, very important that we do not take for granted these people that we connect with in mm. an intimate yeah. setting. And intimate does not only mean sexual intercourse people right. it means intimately emotionally connecting with that person mm -hmm. so you know how some people will say oh well she starts a sentence I can finish it he starts a sentence I can finish yes. it oh, you know what I'm thinking I know what you're thinking that's because you spend time with those people mm -hmm. and you start to understand who the other person is and you start to appreciate their flaws you start mm -hmm. to appreciate the positive things that they bring to the relationship. And likewise, they start to appreciate who you are. Right. So it's very right. important that you rep you understand how to separate as far as your individualism, but at the same time, 
coming together, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just very important that you're connected. Okay. Good to be connected. And I, I think that one goes across the board too, whether it's with your children or your friends that you really care about. Because if you don't spend time with your friends, you really don't know them. You're not feeling their pain. You're not feeling their, you know, their joy and their happiness and whatever their struggles are because you're not spending time. And it's the same thing with your children too. You don't spend time with your kids. You don't know what they're doing. Oops. Okay. I think we have, let's see if we have a call here. Yes, I think we do. Hello. Good evening. You're on the air with Dr. Melanie. Good evening. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am excellent. Okay. Thanks for calling. What's your question? I, because we have kind of exhausted a lot of things here. What What's on your mind? Well, I'm sorry. I was out walking today. So, um, oh, you missed it. Well, you have to definitely watch it afterwards. <laughs> Because I love me, so I have to fix me. You have to, you have to take care of you. <laughs> yes, because I love me. Okay, all right. And if I love me and I fix me, then I'll be able to enhance somebody else. Amen to that. And I, I, I am telling people that they're not supposed to just tell their friends about the I Love Me crusade for April 30th. They need to tell their enemies, people you don't like. Because th th those people, after liking themselves and loving themselves, they might just be a nicer person to be around. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. My, my question tonight, uh -huh. you know, I hate, I hate to hear about abuses in relationships, whether it's, um, whether it's mental, whether it's verbal, whether it's physical. I don't know if anybody has any idea whether you're the doctor or maybe okay. uh, any of your um, audience um, have an idea of how long you're supposed to stay in a, in an abusive um, How long should you stay in an abusive relationship? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Okay, Dr. Melanie, I'm sure you can hear. I, I think you have Sorry. to hang up to hear. Thank you so much for calling. Sure. Um, oh, you can hear. Okay, great. Stay on the line then. Okay, Dr. Melanie, go ahead. So what I would say is thank you to the caller for calling in. Um, but one thing, there's um, kind of... There's a feedback. Okay, I, I think we have to... I, I, I hang up then. I hang up. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. You can stay on the line. I just have to mute your sound. Okay. Go ahead, Dr. Melanie. All right. So what I would say is there is no appropriate time to stay in a relationship where you're physically or emotionally abused. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's violation of your person. And okay. there are situations where, for whatever reason, people might say, well, you know, I'm afraid to leave because he or she might come after me. Or, you know, I don't have a safe environment where I can actually escape to. And so they stay in these relationships. And in some cases, it's for financial um, mm. wealth why they stay. Yeah, a lot of women do stay like for financial reasons. At the end of the day, your self-worth is where you really have to go back. And you have to use that as the defining wake-up call. Mm -hmm. So many, many situations will happen where people go through different situations and circumstances mm -hmm. where they are violated, you know, verbally or physically. But at the end of the day, protection of self emotionally and physically is very important mm -hmm. and there should be somebody you can confide in to say you know this situation is taking place how can I get help and there's mm -hmm. numerous organizations out there that are willing to help but in many cases people are fearful to come forth with such information because they're embarrassed about what happened but at the end of the day you are the victim and mm -hmm. being the victim doesn't mean you have to stay the victim because help is out there Okay, and I, I want women to actually really take this to heart. Abuse in a relationship is not just being battered physically. Um, you can be abused emotionally and mentally, okay? Just by the way your husband or your significant other speaks to you. And if, he, if the person is just your significant other, don't take the next step. Please, he's not going to change. A lot of women, Dr. Melanie, they see the signs prior to and they still plunge into it. It's not about the wedding and the wedding dress. It's about the relationship that you're having with that person. So don't don't think about the pretty dress and the, 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 the crowd that's going to be there and the wine and the cake and all that. What is happening in the relationship? If someone is mean to you prior to putting the ring on your finger, they're not going to be nice after wedding day. 
Okay? <laughs> and I, I don't know, Dr. Melanie, we, we women seem to think that we have the ability to change men. Well, can I tell you, I think being single is like a virus. <laughs> uh, a lot of people seem to have. But singlehood is the ability to live a rich, fulfilling Still life. life, yes. <laughs> that's, that's basically what it is until you make that decision to be committed. And when you make that decision to be committed, mm -hmm. don't, re don't forget, you are inviting someone into your personal space mm -hmm. and you can uninvite them just the same way. Okay, uninvite them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, the next one is own your own happiness. And that's really crucial, I think, because a lot of people and a lot of women, I'm, I'm talking about women because I know it, I see it, I feel it with my friends after doing so many talk shows for so many years. Women seem to think that when they get married or they have a relationship, they're going to be automatically happy. And it just doesn't work that way. Okay, I, we think, I think we have another call here. Yes, hi, good evening. You're on the air live with Dr. Melanie? Well, it's me again, Corrie Ben. Okay, um, I, I'm going to ask you to turn down the sound behind you because that's what's creating the feedback. You have to turn your sound down. And then it, it, it will make things a little clearer for us here. All right? Okay. All right. You want to do a follow-up to the question that you asked about abuse of the relationship? Yeah, yes. I'm trying to get my, my thing to turn down here. Okay. 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 Right. okay. Yes, go All ahead. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, yeah, I was just thinking while you guys are talking that if somebody loves themselves, for example, me, I don't know if anybody loves themselves like how I love them. <laughs> um, first of all, and I'm not going to allow anybody to beat about me, regardless mm -hmm. if it's mentally, verbally, mm -hmm. or physically, uh -huh. or physically. So it's not, like you have this campaign now, I mean, from the day you started on, on your show, you've been pounding on I love me. And you know, when somebody repeats something like that every day, mm -hmm. it becomes a reality. Yes, it so does. Think, yes. Yes. I think, especially for us female, and that's only female, because sometimes females are abusive as well to the male. Yes, but that to me isn't, Dr. Melanie, it's a little less for the reverse as opposed to women being more abused more than men. Because some men do get abused by their women, yes, we know that. Thank you. Um, the ratio. Yeah, I know, yeah. I was talking to a gentleman the other day, you know, telling me that he needed a nice woman because this woman that he. <laughs> <laughs> No, for real. This now we to make her. This woman that he's dating, yeah, she's so miserable. She's so, I mean, it's like rain falling and won't stop. You know, the scripture says uh, a, a man will live on the whole stop than live with, with a, uh, a, a, a cantankerous woman. Cantankerous, okay. but does the and Bible tell us something about that? That's exactly what I quote. Yes. Exactly, yes, yes, yes. yes. So, and then, you know, he was saying that he need a real nice, and you can tell that this man is a, 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 a calm spirit person. Mm. And then you have some, some kind of kangaroo woman. <laughs> you know, sometimes that's why we need to, we, you know, pray and ask God to help you find a right partner, become mm -hmm. happy person, you know, so that you won't have to run, you know? Exactly. But as I said, if, 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 if we love ourselves as women mm -hmm. or as human beings and tell ourselves that we love, you know, uh, then you won't allow anybody to beat upon you. Exactly, exactly, exactly. If you love yourself, you're really not going to allow anyone to abuse you. Right. You, will, you know, I, I, there's a book, Dr. Melanie, that, that's called Real Love. I interviewed that gentleman. He lives in Georgia. And he, one of the things he stated in the book, and he said on the interview, women... When you go out with a man on a first date, don't act as if you, you know, you're at dinner and you don't like to eat food. Eat your food. Be yourself. I'm serious. And he used that as one of the examples. And he said, if the guy does not like who you are at that moment, it's not meant for you. Let him go. Don't pretend as if, you know, you don't like to eat and, you know, you're so prissy, prissy and, oh, you know, I can't speak loud or, you know, I'm, he, he said you need to be yourself in order to find exactly. real love. Yeah, and, and that's what his book is about. Not only that, just exactly. to add to what you, you know, said. You I, 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 I think people think that I don't chew properly, I mean, in the sense of, <laughs> uh, 
And everybody goes through the same way when you eat it. Yes. And, and one of my friends said, oh, that when I started dating, they were um, they were thinking about me when I go forward to dinner, if um, how I'm going to be eating. You know? <laughs> I, that's how I eat. That's how I eat. I eat. And, and I don't think I can, I ever fall in love like some people that have and can't eat because they have butterflies in their stomach. Mm -hmm. I am going to eat and I will not stop myself because I found a man and I'm highly over in, in love with him. No. Okay. Be, okay. As you said, be yourself. Be so yourself. Because can see who you are. And because we hide ourselves sometimes and when ourselves, when we get married and ourselves come out, Mm -hmm. This says don't look too nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know what I'm saying? Okay, Dr. Melanie's so, trying to respond to you. Hold on a second and tell me okay, if you can hear okay. her. Can you hear her? Go ahead, Dr. Melanie. Something I was going to say with regards to um, what the caller said is no. ask yourself some simple questions. What are your strengths? How do you perform? What are your values? And while you're being able to answer these questions, the other thing you have to do is you have to decide the kind of person you want to be by telling yourself the truth about who you are. Mm -hmm. And that when you can understand that you're not capable of managing people, you're also brought to the point where you're able to discover what will motivate your partner. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand who you are first in relation to how you interact with other people. Because if you don't understand who you are, self-identity crisis mm -hmm. is the biggest issue. And so you have to be able to understand yourself before you can understand someone else. Okay, are you still there? I'm still here. Okay, are you hearing Dr. Melanie? From my advice. Okay, all right, okay, great. All right, I, I, I just want to go through, are, are you finished or you wanted to make another yes, comment? I'm, I'm, I think I'm done. Okay, <laughs> all right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for calling. All right, that was that was a very good call because it's true. You know, a lot of women. I'm telling you, when I read this book and I interviewed this, he's a doctor too, like you, Doctor Melody, and he kept saying to me that you know, women, when they go out on a date, they pretend to be someone that they're not, mm -hmm. and it is important for you to be yourself, relax, enjoy the date. If when you're being yourself, that person does not like you, it's okay. It's okay to go ahead and forget about the person. Can I just share something funny? Sure. I'm thinking, um, after hearing that call, and I so appreciate her call, mm -hmm. but what I was thinking of is, I don't know if you ever saw that episode of Oliver, where he went on that date with that young lady to the drive-in. Yes. And, <laughs> <he's just laughs> I'm and, you know, he said, why did you bring, basically, why did you bring so much of your belly with you? Mm -hmm. And she basically was saying, well, you invited me on a date, so you should have known what your pocket was before you got here. <laughs> and so I really can promise you this. I will not be going on a date and going home starving just because I wanted to be cute. I like to eat. Everybody who knows me pretty well will tell you that is something I enjoy doing. Exactly. And I will not be ashamed of that. I am so sorry. All righty, great. Let's just run through these because we... I know you got to go, so let's go. Um, focus, no, the next one is be grateful, focus on the positive, be honest with your partner, agree to disagree. You're not going to agree on everything with your partner. Think before you speak, and we, we know that in Proverbs, don't we, Dr. Melody? <laughs> your tongue is the master of destruction. <laughs> Okay, all right, and then laugh together, that's important. Be alone together, just you and your partner in a private secret place, wherever you want to go for that, you know, outing, and just be alone together. And then the last one is make decisions together. Absolutely. So, right. All right. Okay, Dr. Bellini, I know I have lots more questions for next week that I will just save <laughs> until... And, I'll let you wrap up. We'll give your final thoughts before you go. Um, I just want to say to our audience that self-love is so important. Um, you know, a lot of people have a lot of books written about love. The greatest book about love is the Bible itself. Amen. Um, and the one thing it says, you have to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And mm -hmm. most people will say, well, it's kind of hard to do that because people are so different. But what you would not appreciate 
most likely the other person will not appreciate. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important that you take into consideration these are real human beings with feelings. Yes. And if I say something hurtful to that individual, that individual might not be here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So every single day that you're afforded, appreciate yourself, appreciate your environment, mm -hmm. appreciate uh -huh. the people that come into your life, appreciate the people that God allows to go out of your life, and more than anything else, love without limits. Amen. All right. Love without limits. Thank you so much, Dr. Melanie, for joining us this evening. And we look forward to you next Tuesday again. God's willing that we're both here. Uh, because you never know. Moment by moment, life goes these days. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a great evening. You too. All right. Dr. Melanie, my special guest inside the program this evening, and we thank you so much for joining us from around the world and in the United States. This is Diana Wright reminding you to love yourself. Three little words, I love me. Say to yourself every single day, every single morning, teach your children to love themselves, and if you love yourself, oh, absolutely, your self-confidence is boosted, and we all seek the word L-O-V-E. So think of the word love all the time in your presence forget about the hate and the jealousy and the malice and you know fighting with your family and your friends it's not that important life is too short think of the people in Boston yesterday they all went there to have fun and enjoy the day but no one knew that some people would go home without legs will go home without hands some people died have you thought about that? Have you thought of your blessing that you opened out of that box today? And I ask you and I challenge you to love yourself. It's the most important thing you can do for yourself. It's crucial and we need to get it done. April 30th, International I Love Me Day. October 5 is another day that I'd like for you to circle on your calendar. It's a day that you will be allowed to save a life and it's Save a Life Jamaica Foundation. That is, if you are going to be at the event, we'll tell you about it. We're planning it now. It's going to be good and unique and different. It's a fundraiser to save lives, not only in Jamaica, but around the world. Novelet Gale is the president of the foundation. I'm on the board, along with some other folks, and we are trying truly to give back to do something, not just thinking about yourself all the time. So October 5 is that event coming up. And it looks like it's far away, but remember when we started to talk about the I Love Me crusade on the Diana Wright Show Live and it seemed like forever? Well, April 30th is just around the corner right now. So it's on a Tuesday too. So it's a work day. The person you don't like that much at work, just say to them, uh, check out this chick on, online. She will teach you how to love yourself and you will feel better about yourself. If you, you have enemies, your family members, your friends, all your co-workers, go online, join the Facebook family, love us on Facebook, tweet us and let people know every day loving yourself, the most important thing you can do for yourself. Thank you so much for joining us. Have yourself a super, super evening. And stay prayed up, loving yourself. Remember, tomorrow is Wellness Wednesday with Dax Dunn. And uh, Vanya, his significant other, will join us also. She's part of the company. And they will be on tomorrow morning. On Thursday morning, we'll have Pastor Sewell. He will join us from Jamaica on the show. And then Friday, of course, as well, Big Friday with Diana and Dax Dunn. And so that's basically our week for this week. So, if you'd like us to do something, talk about something, if you'd like me to join your community and be a guest at your event, don't be afraid to call or email me or whatever way you wish to contact me. I'm sure I don't have to explain that too much to you because contacting people these days is so easy to do. All right? So, once again, if you love something, set it free. If it comes back, it's yours. If it doesn't, it was never yours. Thanks to Dr. Melanie for joining us. And if you'd like to hear her and talk to her off air, her practice is called West Palm Beach Family Doctors, Inc., 561-434-5678. That's 561-434-5678. Thanks again for joining us. Adios, au revoir, 
and ciao. Be blessed, stay blessed, and keep loving yourself.